Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. Today is the communion festival of Passover, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about washing your feet. Okay, should be a very informative class. Yep, we're going to talk about the importance of washing your feet. We're going to talk about why the Messiah washed the disciples' feet. And we're even going to talk about why we should be doing the same thing. Okay. Now, the first place we're going to come over and talk about is in John chapter 13, verses 5 through 14. This is where we hear about the Passover celebration in the book of John, that communion festival where they partook in the wine and the bread. Mm-hmm. Well, we see in verse 5 that the Messiah, before they are having this communion, is actually washing the disciples' feet. Right. Mm -hmm. He actually surprised them a little bit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you would, go ahead and read verse 5. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So here you have all of these men around. They're in the upper room. They have already killed the Passover lamb and probably done the processing. And now they're ready to have the dinner. But you have the Messiah who has put a towel around his waist and is now washing their feet. Right. And look what Peter says. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? So Peter has a problem with this. But then look at verse 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but you shall know that hereafter. So you have to remember that the Messiah was setting the example for the rest of us. Right. So in this case, he actually didn't explain to them what he was doing, but he told them later on you're going to understand. Mm -hmm. I think it's by way of this video that most of us are going to understand. Okay. Matter of fact, read verse 8. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. So here is an important part of this story here. We hear this story many times as people think about why it was that the Messiah bowed down and washed these men's feet. Right. Mm -hmm. But you notice that part right there where he says, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part in me. Yes. Mm -hmm. For an explanation of this, we could come back to the book of Exodus in chapter 30. Where we read about Aaron, the mm -hmm. high priest. Right. We understand that the Messiah is now the high priest. Yes. Well, we're seeing here a commandment that tells the priests to wash their feet. If you would, read verse 21. So they shall wash their hands and their feet, that they die not. And it shall be a statue forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. So here you have a basin of water set outside the tabernacle, which, you know, we refer to as the laver of water. This was a place for the Levites and the priests to actually wash their hands and feet before they were allowed to go into the holy place. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Messiah was saying when he told them that if you don't get your feet washed, you have no part in me. Okay. Because you look back over there in Exodus, it says that if they don't wash their feet, then they're going to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was going on here with the Messiah was that he knew that this marriage supper would take these disciples into a holy place. Okay. And it was necessary for them to have their feet washed before they went into this holy place or they would have suffered a spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In other words, their spirit man may have been shut down and not been able to communicate as it would have if it were in a clean state. Yeah, yeah. When in the Old Testament, we see when Aaron and his sons would have went in there, they would probably have physically died. But in the New Testament, we are more talking about spiritual death. Yeah, it would have been a spiritual death, just like Passover itself. Those who don't participate in Passover don't necessarily suffer a physical death today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it may come a day when they will in the future. But today, it's more of a spiritual death that we suffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you would, read a verse 31 out of chapter 40. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. So every time these people went into the holy place, they always washed their feet. Mm -hmm. 
And that makes it make sense that the Messiah was actually washing these people's feet before the Passover supper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to come back to that. Let's come over to the book of Jubilees, chapter 21. And we're going to look down in verse 15. Observe this commandment and do it, my son, that thou mayest be upright in all thy deeds. Now, this is something you was talking about yesterday, so you may have some additional comments to add here, but if you will, read verse 16. And at all times be clean in thy body, and wash thyself with water before thy approaches to offer on the altar, and wash thy hands and thy feet before thou drawest near to the altar. And when thou are done sacrificing, wash again thy hands and thy feet. So here again, we see that it is necessary to wash our feet from the book of Jubilees. Yeah, in the Third Testament, it tells us, I believe it's chapter 32, and I think it's lesson 142, where it tells us that our bodies are important, that our bodies are, and our spirit man, they complement each other. The body is not more important than the spirit man. The spirit man is more important. So our bodies are very important, though sometimes we think of ourselves as filthy rags and all this. Our bodies are still very important. The Father uses them uh, in a very great way. Well, our body is the motor force for our spirit. Mm -hmm. you, you always think of the construction worker. You know, you, you have this human being that shows up at the job site, but what good is he without his bulldozer? Right. He has to have the tools to do the job, else he won't be able to get much done. Mm -hmm. Well, our bodies are those tools that allow us to do stuff here in this lifetime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are actually the clothing for our spirits. Yeah. So it is necessary for us to take care of our bodies so that our spirit man can do the job that it was sent down here to do. Right. The Third Testament refers to the body as our robe for yeah. our spirit. Yeah, and that's what the scripture is talking about when it says that their robes were washed by the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, let's come over and briefly look in Ephesians chapter 5. Chapter 5 and 27 says, That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Well, this brings us back to John in chapter 13. If you would, read verse 10. Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. So how many times have we went and decided that we was going to wash up and didn't bother to wash our feet? Right. Mm -hmm. So what we're being told here is that we can't miss out and not wash our feet. We have to include that in our cleansing. Otherwise, we're not all the way clean. Right. And what we saw over there in Ephesians, it is necessary for us to be fully clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we understand why we have to wash our feet before the Passover meal. And we learn in other scripture that it's necessary to wash our feet before Sabbath days and before holy days and any time we're thinking about doing anything spiritual. But the question remains, why did the Messiah do it? Right. Mm -hmm. Why did he wash everybody else's feet? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, as we start to get an understanding of this, let's come over to Luke chapter 7. If you would, read verse 38. And stood at his feet behind him weeping. And began to wash his feet with tears, and then wiped them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the oil. So here you have Mary Magdalene, who is humbling herself before the Messiah, and actually using her hair and her tears in order to wash his feet. Yeah, you know, when you go to wash a person's feet, um, that's a humbling experience, because, and I can... I can definitely understand why Peter spoke up and he was looking at his king and saying, or his master and saying, uh, no, you're not going to wash my feet. And I'm sure he didn't do it as to be rude or disrespectful, but I think he was saying that, you know, you're the master and I'm the student and you're washing my feet. But it's a very humbling experience. So is that one of the reasons that the Messiah washed his feet? 
Absolutely. Matter of fact, if we come over to Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, the, the Messiah is telling us just this. 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Like we said earlier, he was setting the example for us. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you look previously in that chapter, you see that there was actually some infighting amongst the disciples as they was trying to decide which one was the greatest disciple. Right. Mm -hmm. You see that in verse 21, before the Messiah reminds them that the greatest among you will be the servant. Right. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 26. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. So the foot washing by the Messiah was an example of humility, just like you said. Read verse 27. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. The Father, our Messiah, was acting as the servant for the disciples. Right. And let's come over to 1 Timothy chapter 5. Well reported of for good works. If she have brought you children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have received the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. This is talking about the widow. Mm -hmm. And you notice here how it's saying that it's necessary for her to wash the saints' feet. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is necessary for her to be humble. Let's come over to 1 Samuel chapter 25. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. So foot washing is not only found during the Passover celebration, but it is actually throughout the scripture. Yeah, it's a very humble act. You know, here on the homestead, we try our best to do a lot of grounding where we walk barefoot and I sit here and look at my feet that are dusty and um, I've been out in the garden and walking around and you know if I was to go and get a basin of water and ask you know a family member to wash my feet or if they did me likewise that would be a very humbling and some would say humiliating act. Yeah absolutely so why did the Messiah do it? Why did he, in this big festival now, a big celebration, probably the most important day of the year, when you would have had all of these people walking around in their best attire, smelling good and looking good, mm -hmm. is now the Messiah on the floor washing people's feet? I think maybe one of the reasons is because the Messiah knew Within a few days, within a few hours, he was about to leave his disciples. And while they were, you know, previously bickering about who was going to be the greatest, it was very important for him to let them know that they had to have unity, that, you know, there had to have harmony between them and that the lowest person had is probably the greatest among them. Yeah, that's a good answer. But. I've been praying on this for several years, mm -hmm. and I believe the Father has shared the real reason why he was there doing that on that particular day. Okay. Well, like we said, it's necessary for them to have their feet washed before they come to this spiritual banquet, mm -hmm. before they come to this holy place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But imagine all of these grown men in this room who didn't necessarily know about this particular rule else they would have already went in and washed their feet are now standing here partially unclean because they haven't washed their feet yeah mm -hmm. so what would you do in that case would you tell these people that they need to get up and go wash their feet i would definitely not get up and make a speech and tell them you need to go and watch your wash your feet no. because it's going to be embarrassing yeah you have just humiliated this person by reminding them that their feet are nasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just like it was in many other cases where we know that our words may humiliate a person, it would sometimes be easier just to do it ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you think about this further, how would that have even worked? Where are they going to go to wash their feet? Right. 
They're going to be scrambling around trying to find water, trying to find towels. They're going to make a huge mess of this man's house that they are visitors in mm -hmm. as they try to wash their feet. They're mm -hmm. going to have water everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're going to use up 12 towels. Mm -hmm. So that is why the Messiah did it. Instead of humiliating these people and putting them in the awkward position of having to go figure out how to do this thing, he just grabbed a basin and a towel and did it for them. Right. Mm -hmm. And think about it. Wouldn't you do the same thing? Imagine you have people at your house who are there for the Passover celebration. People that have come from all around. Some have even walked to your house. Are you now going to send them all to your bathroom to tell them to go wash their feet? Right. Wouldn't you have to have a sign at the gate to say you have to wash your feet before you have the Passover meal? Mm -hmm. And think about all of those people going into your bathroom one by one trying to wash their feet. That's true. And think about those that will say, my feet already clean. Yeah, so you have to single out people. Mm -hmm. You have this one who has on brand new shoes and brand new socks saying, no, I washed my feet before I left the house. While you have the other one who couldn't afford brand new shoes or brand new socks, maybe even barefooted, sitting there have to have an extra layer of humiliation on him because his feet are more dirty. Mm -hmm. No, what you would do, and I'm sure after understanding this message, some of us may have to think about it a little bit more, but if we ever find ourselves in a position like that where we understand how necessary it is for us to clean our feet, we'll not humiliate the guests who are there and present and ready to take on this celebration, but we'll actually go get a basin and come out and do it for them. Mm -hmm. That's what the Messiah was saying when he was given the commandment to actually wash the disciples' feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Because that's not embarrassing a person or shaming a person, which in the Third Testament teaches us that the Father said he would never do. Um, that's a part of... Humiliate, you know, that's a part of humbling yourself. And like you said, the greatest among you will be the servant. Right. So he has made an example for us to live by. Right. Mm -hmm. He has set the example for us to be for our brother to where we are now going to go get this basin and this towel. And now we're going to come and we're going to wash these people's feet. Yeah, that definitely makes you, puts you in a position where you are serving them because, you know, some people got smelly feet. Yeah. Some people got, you know, diseased feet. Some people got, you know, uh, feet that they just don't take care of. And now you are put in a position where you're sitting there and you hopefully lovingly, hopefully lovingly uh, washing their feet. It definitely puts you in the position of being a servant. Now, imagine what that actually does for you as far as your merits are concerned. Oh, my goodness. Now that you have not only humbled yourself, but you have elevated everybody else around you, these people would have otherwise suffered a spiritual death because they're entering a holy place unclean. Yeah. But you humbled yourself so that they can be exalted. Mm. Mm. That was good. Yeah. Well, I well, think I'm because, going to go ahead. Go, I'm just saying because it makes me think about how um, you exalt them. So now they're sitting in an exalted position, able to receive. You know, they're just thinking better about the position and, and you as well. Yeah. And, and yeah. And I believe the father is, too. I believe we will get rewarded for such an act. All right, well, I think that clears it all up. I think we got a full understanding of why he did it. Yeah, mm hmm So let's get our basins together and get to washing some feet. And let's get ready for Passover. <laughs> so the way this all works is we'll wash our feet before we partake in the communion festival. Mm hmm So with that, I guess we'll say happy Passover. Yeah, happy Passover. And shalom. Shalom.